So in segment 12, we ended with this slide, 67, and the suggestion that we go and look at the M plus outputs for runs 5 through 7 to see how this plays out in practice. So we'll do that. And here is then the first run, which is bringing in poverty into the use var variable list. And does the regression of C1 on poverty as a baseline model? That's all we need to do with that run, just then also record the uh, number of parameters, the log likelihood, and big. Now go into the um, main effect model. That's the run 6. We take a look at the input, and we simply have C1 through C4 on poverty. And here we might want to take a look at some of the results. The logistic regression odds ratios, for instance, we have then C1 on poverty, the two classes. The last class has coefficient 0, C2 on poverty, C3 on poverty, and C4 on poverty. And these are odds ratios, the effect of x on this dating class variable. And here we have the uh, number 8.101, which is familiar from a previous slide with the confidence interval here not including one and therefore indicating a significant value. We can also take a look at the um, transition probability odds. Uh, here it is first evaluated the sample mean for all covariates. So in this case the sample mean of poverty, so an average in between poverty and non-poverty. We get that for the three transitions. But more interesting, probably, is the covariate effect on transition probabilities, transition probability odds ratios, rather, the effect of poverty. And here we take the um, tack of comparing to the diagonal class of stayers. So here you have the transition from C1 to C2, C2 to C3, C3 to C4. And here you have the value that we looked at before, 0 0.305, which is significantly less than 1, with the uh, interpretation that we just talked about in segment 12. Now, turning to uh, the interaction model, you have then run number 7. And this, we got to pay a little attention to the input. Here we're going to have class-specific uh, influence of poverty. So we regressed within model C1 and the different classes of C1, 1, 2, 3. We regress C2 on poverty, so making those slopes different. Same thing for model C2, C3 on poverty, different, and for model C3, C4 is different. Now, um, what you want to do then is to have C1 on poverty mentioned here only, not regress C2 and C4 on poverty, because that leads to a non-identified model where these regressions are both specific and overall. And that's a common mistake. So for that, you just then uh, record the log likelihood, number of parameters, and the BIC. And we end up with a table like this. We first may want to run a model without a poverty covariate, which we have done before. To, and then do a baseline model, C1 on poverty. And this comparing model 2 and 1 establishes that poverty has some effect on the uh, living class variables. That's what we want to establish, first of all. And we can do a likelihood ratio test, quite kosher test here. Two times a, the log difference, two times the difference of the log likelihoods, rather is 310 with two degrees of freedom, with difference in the number of parameters, which means that we definitely should 
choose model 2 over model 1, which makes sense. And then we take a look at whether or not there are any effects on transitions that are significant. So we start with the main effect model, which was uh, run number 6, where we regress all of these C1 to, through C4 on poverty. And we see then that the likelihood is better, and the BIC is better as well. Doing the chi-square difference test of model 2 versus model 3 shows a strongly significant effect, that is, you would need to have model 3, the bolded model here. And then we can turn to the interaction effect model that was in the run number 8, so, sorry, 7, where you have these uh, class-specific effects, C1, C2, C3 class-specific effects on the next latent class variable. The uh, log likelihood improves a little bit, five points here, <clears throat> but if you do a likelihood ratio test of model 3 versus model 4, sorry, model, yeah, model, let's just say 4 here, you uh, get a chi-square of 10 with 12 degrees of freedom, so that's not significant. And therefore, you would choose model 3 here. And BIC also agrees with that. It's the best BIC is for model 3. So that's the main effect model. So that's the one you should interpret. You don't have to then get into all the details of the interaction effect model. I should mention in passing here also that throughout the chi-square difference testing, I take this simple approach uh, of not using the MLR estimator scaling correction factors because they are close to one and wouldn't make a difference, I think, in the choice of models here. But if you want to be more careful, you can do the scaling correction uh, as described and do the chi-square difference testing as described at this uh, part of our website. Finally, then, take a look at uh, what difference it makes to bring in a covariate. Uh, we look at just class percentages here for the, this regular LTA analysis. No covariate, you have the classes 1, 2, 3, and the four time points, starting with 69% in the lowest class. But what happens to these class percentages when we add the poverty as a covariate in the main effect model 3? Well, they remain almost intact no change at all really so in this case and that's obviously not clearly not always happening but in this case bring in the covariate in this one step analysis uh, makes no does not change the class formations at all here 